Hey everyone, you're here with Sarcastic Tech, and before we get right into this video, you must know two things. One, this entire thing is completely unscripted, so I'm going to be kind of all over the place, going off tangents, doing that. And two, I'm holding my mic, so if you hear any bad audio where it's... That's my hands, and I apologize. <laughs> but anyway, uh, to tell you how I've even started to begin this journey... I had a thought like four months ago, I can't remember exactly how long ago, but I had a thought where it was, oh, how can I get a studio light without paying studio light prices, especially for photography and videography, even when I'm dead ass asleep in golden hours <laughs> of the sunset and sunrise. And my solution was, uh, can I even build like a fake sun to be able to do it but I had no idea how I I'm not like electronic savvy like uh da -da 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 -da. what is it what's the word what's the oh well I'm not an electrician electrician that's it that's it and so I've never done that before I've never soldered stuff together it's happening and then four days later I saw that DIY perks put out a video on how to build the sun and let me tell you, when I watched that thing so quickly, it was just, I subscribed to his channel so quick, so fast, I didn't even see my hands. <laughs> and also, since this is from him, I'm going to link him in the description. Please go check out his channel out and subscribe to him because he's an amazing person and I cannot thank him enough for being on my same wavelength. First and foremost, if you want to do this project too, you need a satellite dish. I was just lucky enough to have an extra one that we no longer use, and so I used it. Uh, you need the dish, and you need the arm with it. You don't need to drop a nut and lose it in down a bottomless pit, though. That's still there to this day, but we're just gonna skirt past that real quick. And so I eventually take off the whole mechanism that's holding the arm. And then I get distracted by my puppies because they're adorable and I love them. <laughs> if you don't have dogs to distract you, it's fine. You're good. Cats, birds, bats, it'll all work. <laughs> And then I get the satellite dish off and ba-bam, it is bigger than I thought it was, but it's way smaller than DIY perks. And then there's the dogs again. Oh my God, I love them so much. Uh, and then, you know, since you're down in the South, you got to wave to your neighbor that's on the tractor. It's all good. Ah, and then the little doggos. Oh my God, look at them. That's Maya on the left and Mira who's hopping. I love her. I love them both so much. Oh. <laughs> uh, cute. And that's me taking the arm apart just for later. And before you do anything else, you got to clean it. That's 70% isopropyl alcohol and I dry it with my airbrush. That's literally it, making sure there's nothing on it before you put this mirror film on. And I will link everything that I used for this project in the description below. Definitely use this mirror film more than that aluminum foil tape because the aluminum foil tape has a worse finish later. Do not do not use the aluminum foil tape. Use this mirror film. I could have gotten away with only using one. I bought one for this size. It is a 33 uh, inch wide satellite dish. I'm very positive. So I could have only used one uh, roll of mirror film for it. And it was so satisfying to put on. I was the most nervous about putting this on, but it was so simple. It was so easy. It was so nice. The ends did keep coming off. Ignore me. Just ignore me. Keep ignoring me. It's okay. Just ignore me. <laughs> And then this is with the mirror film on. It still looks bumpy, but that's just because of the satellite dish itself. But it still works and looks good in the uh, after image. Ah, uh, yes. This is the next day. And it looks still so beautiful. Oh yeah. Look at that peel porn. So satisfying. That's the film that I was talking about. Like, that's the film that I forgot was on there. Yeah. Look at that. 
Look at how beautiful that is. Now, this part could have been avoided because if I just put on the whole, the metal holder for the satellite dish before I put the film on, I wouldn't have to cut in it to make sure that I can screw it on. So if you want to avoid this, if you want to do this project, put this part on before, <laughs> before you uh, put the film on. It will save you a, like 20 minutes. <laughs> and then once you tighten it down, give it a little reassuring pat pat and then flip it over so you can cover up those imperfections that you just made. Or just put another imperfection on it. <laughs> but I just slap another little square on of the mirror film on because I've had plenty left. Absolutely plenty left. And then look at that. Yay. Yeah. Another uh, imperfection on there. <laughs> My biggest problem was keeping these down because no matter how hard I pushed them down, they just kept popping up. And I couldn't really figure out anything. Like, I didn't want to put more mirror film on it. So, my solution was going outside to my truck for some duct tape. <laughs> it was really cold that day. It, before all the snow. Oh, God. When did I make this? Last month. Maybe two months ago. <laughs> I don't even know, man. But duct tape. The solution for all. And now those little bits are securely put in place and then you get to see yourself look how beautiful you are now this okay i'm gonna pause that real quick uh this is the arm that i'm attaching if you do not have an arm for your satellite dish you are gonna have to do some math <laughs> and may when you build an arm yourself to find the focal point of your uh arch that the satellite dish is doing. Normally, if you have a satellite dish, you have the arm that goes with it. That's my pl process anyway, so I didn't have to do all that math. I knew my ankle, ankle, <laughs> I knew my angle that my light had to, my LED light had to be at, and I knew the length because that's what the arm was, so I made sure that I could use this arm, so I didn't have to do math. Now for the LED wiring. It looks bad. I know it looks bad, but we'll get there. So this is a 12 volt, 3 amp, 36 watch output adapter. And I do switch this out later, but I'll show you anyway what happens. It came with a female adapter that has room for negative and positive wiring, which was awesome. Immediately awesome. And what I'm grabbing is a booster, which you need <laughs> because my specific uh led needs at least 36 volts of power or at most yeah 36 volts and this one boosts out uh, 11 to 50 and is an input of 9 to 45 which is beautiful there's two buttons on this the in and out which shows you your input and you hit it again to show you your output and an on and off button which is self-explanatory <laughs> It's off right now, and now it's on, and you can see that it's outputting 32 over its max of 12, and that's why you need the booster. This is the LED on its heat sink with some thermal compound. I do get rid of those zip ties later because I hated the look of it, and I was worried because I could not screw it down because of the specific heat sink that I needed, and so I just needed to make a mechanism, and I do it out of wire later. But you do need that heat sink. Oh my god, you need that heat sink. <laughs> so this is CV, constant voltage. It adjusts your output voltage and constant current. It's used to cap your current. You need to cap your current or you, your uh, LED will start pulling more than it needs and it might fry it. So DIY Perks does do uh, give a better example of it, which I highly recommend. And I will link the video in the description. <laughs> So this LED comes to life at 28 volts. And so I am increasing turning my constant current, my constant voltage uh, to give it more power to be able to make the LED work. And I moved it off to the side so you can see that it's very bright. I don't think, <laughs> uh, and that red light means that it's not enough power from the 12 volt. So I do get that 18 volt later. 
but then I do break my heat sink fan, so I just keep it at 32. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes you just you gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta do what you gotta do. But it is still plenty bright, and it will work in for my purposes, which is just putting it downstairs in my basement for our photography later. <laughs> and now we're on to the mechanism to put it onto the arm. I did keep a little middle bit. I, oh, dude, I was taking apart that satellite dish. It was so hard, but it was so worth it. I got some cool looking motherboards from it. It was so neat. I'm keeping it. <laughs> But this is my mechanism made out of wood, L brackets, a lot of nuts. And you, as you can see, you, I did uh, change out the uh, zip ties. So that looks a little bit better, but still looks like a monstrosity. <laughs> and I've made it to where it will work. And it's at the correct angle uh, from the focal point on the satellite dish, on the satellite dish arm, I mean. And it works. It just works. <laughs> And now I'm just going to get a little look-see to see if everything's lining up correctly. I don't have to worry about it to see if my LED is moved at all. And it's good. It may look jerry-rigged. It's fun. <laughs> and then you get a little look-see. Oh, yeah. Look how. Look at that. It's not moving at all. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. And now what I'm about to do is I'm about to attach the pole mount. Oh, look at that. Oh, did you see that little glare already on it? Mm, fabulous. But I'm about to attach the pole mount upside down because that's what DIY Perks did. He, uh, he had his satellite dish upside down where the arm was on top of the dish. Uh, to, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was to make sure that his arm doesn't cast any shadows on his uh, pictures or whatever later. But, I mean hey, I'm doing it. He did it. I'm doing it. <laughs> uh, the little montage of me doing stuff, man, doing stuff. It was something. It was something. I give it another little pat for reassurance. And now we're on to attaching the wiring, the output wiring to the booster. And all I did was strip the wire and uh, I have a crimper. If you don't got one, you can use a pair of scissors. It's pretty fine to get that plastic covering off of it. I uh, just looped them to make sure that that keeps that little uh, nut, nut, screw, screw in it properly. And it was fairly simple. <laughs> this is me using some double-sided tape to stick the booster onto the satellite dish. And this is the on and off button for it as well. If you don't want to just continue to unplug it. But I'm going to continue to unplug it uh, out of the wall. Because that's simpler. And then there's the pole. That I have a little wooden dowel. Not little. That, uh, it will, that this will go over. So I can adjust it as need be. As you can see, that 18 volt adapter is on the table now. I did upgrade to that, and now I have an extra uh, 12 volt for later. <laughs> I'm just cutting some more wire. And that's the crimper, by the way, if you haven't seen that tool before. I did have this. Oh, wait, no, I have done wiring. I put lights in my truck. Psh, duh. Uh, but I didn't solder anything. And this, I had to solder. That's the female adapter I was talking about with a negative and positive. I should have shown that earlier, but did it now. It, information is still in here, I swear. <laughs> and once I get that at the link that I want, I can go ahead and attach it to the input uh, side of the booster. Same thing, strip the covering off, of, strip the plastic off of it, put a little loop in it to make sure that screw stays straight, straight and has plenty of contact with the metal. Bada bing, bada boom. <gasps> the moment has come. It's plugged in. I'm about to turn it on. You're about to see the fruit of my labor. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that. Look how fabulous that is. It's so fucking bright. <laughs> It's so bright. I'm so happy with how it turned out. Oh, 
It was so worth it. Oh my god. And this did not cost me as much as a studio light would cost me. So, you know, no gain, no no pain, no gain. <laughs> no gain, no pain. And it looks so good. I'm really hoping that those parallel rays just, mwah, you know, mwah. Oh, gorgeous. So the reason I've been sitting on this video for so long is that I had a plan that involved me building a full window down in my basement where I could also detach the satellite dish and take it with me for whenever I need it outside or something, if I wanted it to be outside or in a different room. However, the plywood that I need for said project, I cannot get. Because one, I'm not getting the plywood that I need from Lowe's or Home Depot strictly because of the quantity that I need. Because that'd be expensive. And two, the thrift store that I frequent is out of plywood. <laughs> That's, you know, they sell for like maybe two bucks, sometimes maybe five. And that's what I want to grab. So whenever I do end up able to build said thing, I will update you guys. <laughs> Until then, I hope you all keep in touch in the, for the next video. Despite my horrible upload schedule, thank you for sticking around anyway. <laughs> so I'll see you guys. Bye-bye.